One question that I've been asked by a couple of different people so far since starting this YouTube channel is how do I come up with all these different project ideas? And when you start getting more experience, I feel like the amount of things that you know you can build ends up growing and growing. So like you can start tackling more and more ideas. And for example, I want to share this idea with you that I built in about a day. One of my kids was trying to learn how to rhyme words, right? And for some reason it was kind of she was struggling with some of the words. So I decided to see if I can use OpenAI to basically generate a set of words, two of them that rhyme, one of them that doesn't. And then also I use Dolly to generate a description of the word using a kind of a children's drawing illustration. And then thirdly, I added a play button, which uses my own voice through a third party service called Eleven Labs to basically read out the words. So I'm gonna go ahead and just show you how this works. I'm gonna click on fish, call, and ball. So fish, fish, call, call, and ball, ball. So some of these actually sound quite like my voice. So I'll, I'll kind of show you the entire process and I'll walk you through how this is all set up. So the idea is that you can basically select the one that doesn't rhyme. So fish doesn't rhyme with call and ball. Added some little audio to basically tell my kid that she got it right. And then it generates a new set. And if the images hasn't been used yet, it'll go ahead and ask Dolly to generate those. And then we get a picture of a pony. So we got sun, pony, and fun. A pony. And that kind of sounds like my voice, the pony. So I think you get the idea. So let me just kind of walk you through an entire project overview. I'm going to draw some diagrams. I know my followers like me when I draw diagrams. But first of all, I'm using Remix for the front end, and I'm using Convex for the back end to basically call the Dolly API, call the OpenAI, and also call Eleven Labs to generate the audio that's using my own voice model. Convex is a service that I've been doing for this hackathon, um, but so far, I mean, I really like this service. Honestly, I've been able to prototype projects so quickly. For example, this project I prototyped in about like an hour or two. How does this work? When this page first loads, I'm actually invoking a Convex mutation, which kicks off a Convex action. So Let's just go ahead and draw a, uh, a picture of a user here. By the way, this is the Eraser IO um, drawing application I use to frag all my videos. I love this one too. So how this works is that the UI, when it first loads, it has an effect and it's going to call, I'll say invoke convex mutation. Okay. And this is going to basically create um, a set record. So let me kind of show you the code. I'm gonna walk you through the diagram and the code and just walk you through how this all works. I only have one page in this entire application. But when this component first mounts, I say create a new round, which calls a create set function, right? So this calls a convex mutation, which basically just inserts some data into a database. Okay, so like we'll have like a sets up here. Uh, it'll make a empty set with some generic placeholder data. And it also kicks off a convex action. Okay, now an action is where you can do like third party API calls, which is where we're doing like open AI calls and other stuff like that. All right, so we got an action here, and this action is going to basically invoke open AI. So this action invokes open AI. Let's just go ahead and look at that. And the way you do this in Convex is you just basically schedule an action. Um, and I'm basically saying call this action called generate rhyme set. And in the meantime, this is going to return to the front end. So the front end gets an ID. And the way that Convex works is basically you can call queries from your front end kind of like um, TRPC queries or React queries, where I'm saying call a query here using the ID, if it happens to be set, to get that set data. Okay, And behind the scenes, Convex uses WebSockets to basically automatically update my UI when this data changes. So like this is how it's working. It is updating UI when set data changes. And I'll say WebSocket event. Okay, So automatically, like we get this WebSocket connection that's listening for events. And when anything changes this set data, it's gonna fire off an event and the UI just basically reacts to that. And up. So let's go back to the mutation and figure out how this actually works. We call generate rhyme set. Now what this is doing is given that set ID, we call open AI with a prompt. I say, you know, generate me three words. Two of them have to rhyme, one of them doesn't rhyme. It has to be in this format um, with this ECMA 404 compliant JSON format. This gets it right like 90% of the time. Sometimes it doesn't send back JSON and my application crashes. That's basically the uh, prompt. And then I call OpenAI and I send that prompt. I do temperature of one so that it's more random. I try this with a lower temperature and it basically gives me the same words every single time. Um, so one of the bump of that temperature a little bit, GPT-4. But as you can see here, I pass in the input and then we get back the response. I parse that JSON. And then here's the cool part with Convex, I schedule off 
three more actions. Okay, so I basically do a promise all, I say kick off three more actions and generate images for those three words. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a line from this action to this action up here, where this one is actually gonna run three separate processes. Now, I don't know how the best way to like simulate concurrency here, but these are three separate um, functions that are running and generating those images concurrently. So as these images are generated from the uh, Dolly API, which I'll show you that code in just a second, I actually have another table in Convex called images. And that is basically just a giant lookup map. So like if some, if there's a word dog, this is going to have a URL to my image.png or something. So this is updating records and basically keeping track of those images and caching them somewhere. So in the front end, when it does that query to get the set, I'm actually aggregating some more data. I'm basically pulling in any images that were generated. Um, we'll, we'll see how this works in just a second. But let's look at the action real quick of how we generate images. Okay, so again, we're using an open AI endpoint where we pass it a, a word. So for example, dog or ball or whatever. And I say, do a children's drawing, vivid colors centered. Um, and when we get the response back, what I'm doing is I'm storing that in Convex's storage, right? Convex has a built-in storage mechanism, which basically you pass it the image data and then you can get the URL to that image. And then I call a mutation to store that, okay? So there's a create image mutation that is going to store that image like I mentioned. So that's basically this part right here where it stores a word and an image URL. I kind of have it structured a little bit differently. This is like word, dog, um image URL. Okay, so technically this is what the images table kind of looks like. Um, but let's go back to the original action. Notice that down here we actually call generate voices, which is another action, and we pass the list of words. So let's go down here and we're going to go ahead and just call another action. So I'll say action, and this one's called generate voices. Okay, so this is using a third-party library called 11 labs to basically take a model that I trained Go ahead and draw a, a cloud. I'll call it 11 labs. Okay, so this is going to call the 11 labs API to generate the, the voices here. And let's click on this and see how this works. So again, we just do an API call. We say, hey, using a voice ID, which I'll show you how I got that in a second. I want you to create some text to speech with the same word that was created. Okay. And then I get that, and I also store that in Convex's file storage, which you can see here. And then I store a, another data structure for the voices, okay? And I basically call that for all three words. So again, there's another set, which I'll put over here. I'll call it voices, and this will be word, and it'll say voice URL. And this will be my voice, um, whatever. We'll just say MP3. I mean, again, this is just an example. There's actually like a UID for the ID. But this is basically going to call 11 labs, and then it uses the voice that was generated and it stores that in Convex's file storage. And then I get a URL and I store that in the data as well. And then finally, after we're done generating all these voices and doing all this cool stuff, we, we run a mutation to basically update the, the set. Okay, so we store the words, we store what's wrong, and we store the IDs. So basically this one's gonna come over here and update the set. Okay, it's gonna go ahead and put um, words here. We'll say like dog, ball, at, or something like that. And then I'll put like the wrong word would be cat. And then also this query is going to do some more stuff. It's going to get a voice map. So I'm going to say voice map, which is going to be an object that has the name of the word and then point to a URL here. And then it also does a image map. So it'll be like dog URL. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can move this out of the way. Okay. So let's look at this query. Cause again, like the images are stored in a separate table. The voices are stored over here. But somehow the UI is just going to automatically update when these things change. Okay, so let's go back to the query here. Let's go to query. I'll say sets. And we're going to look how this works. It's saying, hey, get me the set information, which is going to have like the words and which word was wrong. But then it also has some logic for getting the image and the voice URLs. So you can see down here, the logic's a little bit hacky. I need to kind of clean it up. But it creates two map objects. And it basically loops through the three words um, and it gets all the images for those words, and it also loops over the three words for the voices, and then it returns back the set concatenated with an image map and a voice map. And the really cool thing about Convex is that because this thing is actually doing more database queries, whenever any of these tables change, like this one changes or this one changes or the set changes at all, basically this query is going to get kicked off again. It's going to rerun and it's going to send that WebSocket event over to the user. So I don't have to write much code at all in the front end to have it automatically just show the latest data. 
I get those WebSocket events and that's also abstracted away from me. So like if I go to my main page, you'll see I don't have any logic for like running stuff when stuff is done. I, that data just comes in, right? That is going to just basically refresh and get all the information. And then through the code, I basically just say like, hey, like when this stuff is getting set in the database, I'm just going to go ahead and show it. Otherwise, I show a spinner. So I do that with the images. I do that with the uh, speaker. So like if you try to click play and the voice isn't done generating, it just doesn't do anything. Then down here, we have a button. We select the correct answer. It just plays a correct sound or a wrong sound. All right. So that is how it all works again. I don't think I could have done this with as little lines of code if it wasn't for Convex. So I think I, I'm, I really do like the service. I will say, although the um, hackathon is sponsored by Convex, this video is just I'm making because I just really like the service and I thought it was super cool to be able to like get this all going in like one or two hours. Because doing this with like serverless or anything else, it would be a little bit more involved. So let's look at Eleven Labs. This is a cool service. I actually just signed up for subscription just for this video. It cost me a dollar. Um, it's, it, this video is not sponsored by 11 labs, but I want to show you how this works. I basically went here and I created a, a clone to voice. I went instant voice cloning. I uploaded a one minute clip of one of my YouTube videos, and then I created this voice here. Now you go down here, you can click use, and then we can basically just add some text here and say, hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to teach you about TypeScript. Okay. Let's just go ahead and generate that and see what it sounds like. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to teach you about TypeScript. So, I mean, that's that's pretty close to my actual voice, I would say. Like, that's that's pretty amazing. So, again, that is how I basically managed to set up this little little game for uh, my child to kind of learn about her rhyming words. If anyone's interested in looking at this code, you can just go to my GitHub repo, WebFCody slash rhyme time. And you can see how I kind of got this set up using uh, Convex, 11 Labs, and OpenAI to basically generate uh, the images, a random set of rhyming words and some voice that sounds exactly like me. So hope you guys liked watching this. Um, hope you guys liked the little overview. If you did, be sure to click that subscribe button and press the like button because it helps my channel grow. And like always, I have a Discord link where you're welcome to come in and join. If you just like to be part of a community of people just learning the code or people like myself where I just build cool things and share it with you all. Other than that, have a good day and happy coding.